Welcome, welcome! It's Mud Dog with the Texas Space Navy bringing you another Star Citizen video. And today we go back to the Professions of the Verse series. And I've got probably the profession that everybody has been most interested in. Well, I can't say that, but a majority of the community has been interested in this profession. Being an explorer. Exploring. That is the top voted profession amongst the entire community for the last I don't know how many years. And this ship here is the ship that everybody's been waiting for, waiting to see, waiting to see what it can do, how it can do it, how awesome it would be. This is the Anvil Carrick. And I just did a rundown on the Anvil Carrick uh, yesterday. So check that video out if you haven't seen it. But let's get into exploring as a mechanic and we'll talk about some of the ships that you can use to go on exploration or adventures. So there's no specific thing set for exploration on RSI or on uh, Cloud Imperium's website. Uh, so exploration is more or less the discovery and surveying of unknown locations and jump points. Um, you're gonna be equipped with some powerful sensors, some extended fuel tanks. You're gonna push the boundaries of known space uh, looking for opportunity to make your next big discovery or the next big discovery and explorers who don't make grand discoveries will still earn good money by selling location of interesting anomalies uh, to researchers uh, surveying or rich asteroids or planets uh, and conducting stealthy military reconnaissance for uh, certain organizations and whatnot the exploration of jump points will be a very important part of the game as well because some jump points haven't been discovered yet. So we'll need an exploring ship that's capable of having the sensors to detect those and having the capability of exploring those jump points to find out where they go. They may lead to another known system. They may lead to an unknown system. It may be a shortcut for a fantastic trading route. Uh, so anytime you can find a jump point and explore it, it could be worth a lot of credits in the game. Now it's going to be dangerous doing that. Uh, some jump points aren't going to be stable. Sometimes you may not have a jump drive that can keep the jump wormhole open long enough. Um, you're going to have to learn how to maneuver through the jumps manually. So there's going to be all sorts of danger when it comes to that part. Uh, exploring new worlds, finding new creatures, because there's going to be animals in the game, there's going to be all sorts of creatures, there's going to be all sorts of plants, and maybe you'll discover the next cure for a certain space disease, uh, maybe you'll discover a new alien race, there's all sorts of different things that you can do within the exploration part of the game. <clears throat> So for those of you that want to go on short or long journeys to distance lo distant locations, whether it's solo, group, or even um, you know as a contract to discover, there's all sorts of ships to suit every explorer's taste. Um, there's going to be all sorts of different mission types that are going to be available for those ships. So under the exploration on the RSI website, they've got three roles that they list. One is a pathfinder, one is expedition, and one is touring. So what exactly does that mean? What do the other roles in the exploration mean? Uh, one of the, this is one of the frequently asked questions that they posted up, and expedition ships are for multi-crew, um, like in the exploration category. So they're able to support extended explorations with much larger supplies and often vehicles. So, so there's a few ships in the game that have vehicle bays, <clears throat> whether it's ground or space-based. Uh, those are gonna be your more your expedition ships. They're for the longer distance, longer, you're gonna be out for months at a time out in space. Luxury explora exploration ships, they cover kind of both of the other roles in that they, they can do long distance stuff, be out there for a long time. Um, you could also uh, find out new jump points, etc. 
you could tour a, a system, but you're going to do it in a much more luxurious manner, like the 890 Jump, the 600i, or maybe the 300i or 315p. Those are much more luxurious ships as compared to like the Aurora LX. Um, compare the compare the 300i to the Aurora LX. The they both have one bed, you know, one seat, pilot seat. But the 300i is much more luxurious than the Aurora LX, so it falls more in the luxury role. Uh, touring, like I said, it's kind of like you know taking a jaunt through the system. Uh, maybe you're going to get paid to show off a system to somebody. You could still do that under the exploration gameplay mechanic. <clears throat> so that's something to keep in mind when you're talking about exploring. Uh, most people really enjoy like the uh, Constellation Aquila commercial where they go and discover a new world and there's uh, somewhat primitive uh, ape-like creatures there that they discover and you know they get out with a rover and all that. <clears throat> that is pretty cool and you're going to be able to do that with an exploring vessel. But it just depends on which vessel you're talking about. So take this vessel here. This is the Pisces. Um, this one is like a snub fighter that was made to go with the Carrick. So it's a small short range exploration vessel. Yeah, it has a little quantum drive. You can jump all over the system if you want um, and look around, uh, but you're gonna have less fuel to do that. So this is gonna be more of a away ship. So you park in orbit in your Carrick, you take this ship down to the planet and look at some things. Uh, this is the Aurora LX. It is a sm smaller exploration vehicle. It's a starter ship. It's going to be made for smaller wormholes, you know, trying to discover those type things, or maybe discovering an uh, asteroid field inside of the system or a mining area that uh, wasn't previously discovered. So it's not going to be a long range explorer. This is going to be more of a, a short range explorer, um, system to system probably not going four or five systems over right away. I mean, you could do that, but you're going to have to stop and get some fuel along the way. <coughs> so it's not ideal for long range exploration, but it's perfect if you want to discover new things within systems, maybe known systems, or maybe you discover a small jump point to an unknown system. You can still use that and go in there and discover all sorts of things. Uh, so these shorter range ships are going to be really good at that. Something like a Carrick is not going to be able to go to a, go through a small wormhole. You're going to need a smaller ship that's jump capable like an Aurora LX to do that. The Pisces doesn't come equipped with a jump drive, so you're not going to be able to send it through one of those wormholes. I wish you could. That would be awesome. Uh, I, I think it should have a little jump drive that's capable of two jumps, one through and one back. But unfortunately, that's not the case. Uh, this is the Mustang Beta, another starting ship, a starter ship. It's also an explorer ship. It is capable of doing the short range exploration as well. So don't expect it to, you know, make uh, long jaunts out into deep space. If you're getting this thing, don't expect it to be able to do that without frequent stops, which means it may end up being a money sink if you're not taking jobs along the way. <clears throat> Many of you probably will do that. If exploration is going to be your thing, you'll probably want to take a job here and there on your way to the point that you're trying to go to. There's nothing wrong with discovering a mining uh, claim or a mining uh, spot on a planet or an asteroid field that's heavily rich, you know, with ore to mine. This is the 85X. <clears throat> so it's going to fall under more of the luxurious exploration. This is the little snub that comes with the 890 Jump, which is going to be considered somewhat of an exploration ship as well. Uh, it kind of doubles as transport and exploration. Uh, the 85X is got, it's got seats for two. But there's no bed, there's no jump drive, there's a quantum drive in there. You'll be able to travel from place to place within a system, but you're not going to be able to jump to another system using that ship. So keep that in mind. This is the 315P from Origin. 
both it and the 300i are considered luxurious exploration or pathfinding exploration for this one it's still a luxury ship it's highly maneuverable it's got decent weapons load out but it's got that sensors package that's going to be able to help you discover new jump points and new locations and new mineable ore and just all sorts of different anomalies out in space this one is it kind of again like the aurora lx that you know you have a bed in there um you're gonna be able to make shorter range discoveries you're not really meant to go deep 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 into space with this thing you can but again you're gonna need a place to refuel um it's not gonna make its own quantum fuel most likely you know you can see that the guns replaced in the front with a sensor package so you really don't want to get into a fight with many of these ships either they're not built for that they're made for exploring for discoveries for new things going through jump points and that sort of thing uh, this one at least has a bathroom in it whereas the aurora lx does not so that's something else that this one might you know favor you it's also got a little kitchenette and everything so you could use this one probably for a little bit longer haul than the LX, to be honest. Uh, but I, I still don't think this is a long-range explorer. As I wouldn't want to use it for that because I don't think, you know, you're going to... I think you need to refuel eventually. So, again, I wouldn't use this for long-range exploration in the least. Now, I always miss a ship here and there when I do these videos about professions. So I'm sure somebody's going to leave a comment about it. That's cool. I'm okay with that. I'm not perfect. Uh, there's a lot of ships that can be considered exploration, like the Terrapin. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily consider the Terrapin exploration ship, but you can do some short-range exploration with it, and it's kind of stealthy in that role. So it definitely should fall in that, but I don't have the footage of that ship um, in here. So we won't count it necessarily towards exploration. And then now you have the Freelancer Durr. Now we're talking about a little bit longer range exploration. The Durr is going to have much better range than the Aurora LX or the Mustang Beta or the 315P. This is like the next step up when it comes to exploration vehicles. It's got room for a crew of four. Um, or yeah, you could probably carry more than that if you really wanted to have like rotating shifts and stuff. There's four seats in it, so you could definitely seat four in here. There's four bunks, so you could have four people sleeping in it as well. <coughs> You're gonna be able to run sensors here in the back. It's got room for cargo, which is something that some of the other ships that we've talked about don't have. It's got this docking collar up here or airlock. Um, and again, you know, it's got this little section here, which is going to be more or less where it houses a lot of the sensors, fuel tanks, etc. And then the back, which will have a turret and the back ramp and room for cargo here as well. This ship has a more advanced uh, scanning package on the nose. Um, it's going to, like I said, have bigger fuel tanks, so you're able to go further. Again, it's, it's not going to necessarily be for super long range exploration, but you can definitely go a few systems, I would imagine, over before you have to worry about the refueling and all that. I would also say that this one will be able to probably discover and maneuver through up to medium uh, sized wormholes. If we're lucky, it should still be able to go through small wormholes. I kind of hope that it does, because to me, it's, it's kind of on the upper end of the, uh, I guess lower tier exploration vessels and when I say lower tier I don't mean lower tier this is an awesome ship some people will not ever get out of their freelancer for the entirety of their star citizen career and I can understand that appeal it's a smaller ship you know you can fly it by yourself or with a buddy and just go out and explore for long periods of time and come back um, it, it's a great ship for that. It's it, the freelancers are just a great ship in general. <clears throat> um, they're very versatile, and this is no exception to the rule. So it's going to be a fantastic ship for exploration for sure. Which now leads us to a bigger ship. This is going to be the Constellation Aquila from Robert Space Industries. 
This ship is going to be capable of carrying an Ursa rover and a Merlin, a P-52 Merlin uh, fighter. So you'll have a snub fighter and a ground rover for this vehicle to help you explore distant worlds, distant moons, um, to defend yourself against any kind of uh, enemies. The, the Constellation has really good weapons as well. Um, they're a little bit bigger than the Freelancer's weapons. Of course, it's a quite a bit bigger ship. It's like twice as big. But uh, this ship is very capable in a fight. So you're going to be able to explore long ranges in this thing and be pretty comfortable doing it, not having to worry about too many enemy fighters, at least, coming after you. Now, you you know, anything bigger than you, or you, you might have to worry about. But this ship should have the speed to get away from those. Um, and it should have the sensor suite to be able to detect a lot of those as you fly through. As you can see, you have weapons lockers here. You have bunks. Um, back here, you have the cargo or the rover bay. You, it, it doubles as both. You can put your rover in there. It'll definitely fit an Ursa rover. <coughs> Maybe even a couple of bikes. So, uh, very cool. And then all the way to the back of the ship, this is where the airlock is for the Merlin. <coughs> As you can see, it's possible to jump down into the cockpit from here. Hopefully, within a patch or two, you will be able to undock that Merlin and use it. Uh, fight and then redock. Uh, that is the game plan. They're going to do ship dock to do docking to docking, hopefully in 3.9. So hopefully we'll get to see some of that action. And finally, you'll be able to use your Constellation to the fullest of your ability with that snub fighter. Very cool ship. I really love the Aquila. It was one of my favorite ships early on. That was one of them. I was like, that's the one I really want to get. <clears throat> of course, more ships have come out. And there's a lot of ships out there that everybody's going to be like, hey, that's the one I want. Um, you, you can purchase these ga these ships before uh, they come out. You can purchase them when they come on sale. But I don't always advise that. You'll be able to get all these ships within the game by building up the funds for it. Now, this is the Origin 600i. It comes in an expedition and a touring. There's not a huge difference. There's a few things inside that are a little bit different obviously the luxury one is more luxurious the exploration one is probably more functional for long distance travel thing has a pool table in it which you'll see some of the internals of it here in a minute <clears throat> but it's a fantastic ship for exploration this one to me is even better than the Aquila just for the fact that it's much bigger there's more to do on board. Uh, there's more spaces on board, so you're not going to feel so confined to tight spaces. If you're more claustrophobic, the Aquila is probably not going to be the one for you. You'll want something like the 600i that's a little more spread out. You can have multiple people run this ship uh, as far as a crew. <coughs> it's not necessary. Uh, you, one person can fly it, but you do have a couple of turrets that you will probably want to be manned by somebody. So I do recommend that this is more for a crew of three. You know, the Aquila, you would probably want at least three on that crew as well. You know, somebody to run a turret and somebody to run the snub fighter if you get in trouble. That's the way I like to look at things is if I get into a fight and I absolutely have to fight how many people do I need to have on board minimum to be able to be somewhat effective in a fight? So that's what I look for for my minimum crew requirements. You can go to the ship matrix page and it'll tell you minimum, maximum crew. <coughs> Sometimes you can trust the matrix page, but a lot of times you can't. That's just the way it is. I personally, you know, I go based off of what I see on the ship itself. And for this one, I would say a three crew, the Aquila, a three crew. The Freelancer, you could get, get away with a two crew. Uh, you could fly it solo for sure, but then you won't have anybody in the turret in the back. Uh, it's always best to have a, a second person for a multi-crew ship at least. 
but I, I know how I am, and I may not be able to play with somebody all the time. I may only be on for a few minutes. So some of these ships you could solo feasibly, uh, but you're just not going to operate at peak performance. Um, as you can take a walk through the crew quarters here into the toilet tree area for the men. There's one for the women as well. You have your environmental suits or armor uh, racks there with weapons racks off in the walls. These are all the sleeping quarters for your crew. It's wide open. It's kind of cool, actually. They've got the little lounge area, couches. And then here's the rover bay. Again, you should be able to fit an Ursa in here with very little problems. You're probably not going to fit a tumbrel tank in there. <coughs> I believe the 600Is actually come with an Origin rover. Uh, so you should expect that. And there's a theory that those may be coming out soon, like next month. Uh, so that's something to think about is these Origin rovers that may be coming out. What are they going to look like? How big are they? And here is the master suite where you will be sleeping as the pilot, the captain, and that would be the 600i in a nutshell. Very great, a very good ship for exploration or touring. Um, phenomenal ship for that. <clears throat> Next up, we have a big ship, the biggest ship in the game at the moment. And this is the 890 Jump. It's a luxury yacht, more or less. <clears throat> you can transport VIPs, so this will also have uh, the profession of being personal transport, but it's also an exploration or touring vehicle. Um, you can take this thing out for months at a time touring the galaxy. It's got plenty of facilities on board to support several people, uh, at least four VIPs, your crew of you know eight or nine if you want to have that many, uh, and the captain as well. You'll be able to use use the space very well for long distance travel. I guess is the best way to say it. It's wide open. Definitely not something to worry about if you're claustrophobic. This ship is massive. Uh, it's beautiful. If you want to explore in style, this is the ship for you. It'll get the job done. Uh, you know, I, I might end up using this one to cruise around quite a bit. I, I really like this ship, though it does seem more geared towards parties. Uh, so there is that. It's more like a cruise ship to me than anything else. So maybe it's not geared towards what they said it was going to be geared towards in the beginning, which was going to be... Um, a, possibly a command center for an org. To me, it's more of a party barge, party ship, a party yacht. Uh, but you can definitely use it to explore the galaxy. It's got the long-range capabilities to do that. And there's going to be plenty of people that decide that that's what they want to do in it. They want to explore the galaxy in their 890 jump. More power to them. I will probably use a different ship to do that. <clears throat> Most likely, uh, I'll be using the Carrick here for that responsibility or for that job. Uh, the Carrick also has a rover bay. The 89 Jump has a rover bay and it's capable of carrying ships in the hangar up top as well. So uh, all these last few ships that we've talked about have the capability of launching a rover and with the exception of the 600i, you can also launch a snub support craft. <coughs> this one definitely has a hangar to do that too. Uh, so guys, that's exploration. Leave a comment. Let me know what you want to do in exploration, which ship you want to use, etc. Hit that like button if you like the video. Hit that subscribe button. Uh, I've got a giveaway coming away on the March on March 7th on my live stream. My org's always looking. Look down below if you want to be a part of that. If you're new to the game and you want to sign up, there's information below on how you can use a referral for that. I'm Mud Dog with the Texas Space Navy. I'll see you out in the verse.